see something. I can't tell if it's metallic or what. And there's, uh, I can see like lines coming down below, but I can't see anything below it. So it's just so slow and so small, and you can't see it until you're so close. Some kind of dark object. You can see some strings or something hanging down below it. Uh, I can't tell if it's holding anything. Those are F-16 pilots trying, but kind of struggling to describe a mystery object that was in the sky over Lake Huron. The pilots shot down the object after missing on the first shot on Sunday. Given all of this and what we have seen in recent days, the Senate got a classified briefing on those objects yesterday. The House had an unclassified phone call about it because they're out of session. All of this is coming amid a bipartisan effort to counter China on several fronts. So joining us now are two lawmakers from different sides of the aisle, but both at the forefront of this issue, Independent Senator Angus King of Maine. He serves on the Intelligence Committee and caucuses with the Democrats. And Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher of the House Intelligence Committee and Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the United States and China. So the two perfect guests here to describe this. And given the briefings that each of you received yesterday, I think our first question is, is it clear to you what these objects were that have been shot down, the three of them, and that the U.S. will actually be able to recover them? Well, I, I think, Caitlin, the, the answer is, is no. It's not clear what these objects were. We're very clear on the balloon issue, on the Chinese balloon, where it came from. And we're getting more and more clarity on what its mission was as the debris is recovered off of South Carolina. But of these other three objects, we still don't know. They were much smaller. Uh, we don't know who sponsored them, what their mission was, and uh, you know I'm not, I can't reveal any classified information. But basically, I, I can tell you that uh, we're still searching for the debris, and uh, we'll know much more when uh, when we find it. So, Kaylin mentioned in, in the introduction that the senators got a briefing yesterday. I just want to play a little bit of what they said coming out of that briefing, and then get you guys to respond. Here it is. It was uh, a really uninformative briefing. Uh, we learned very, very little. If you are confused, you understand the situation perfectly. We're still trying to figure out exactly what some of these things were, and they were not in the category of the balloon. So here's what I found interesting, um, uh, Representative Gallagher, is that those gentlemen, and they didn't say it there, but the, you know, um, Senator Kennedy from Louisiana, from my home state, said, um, I, if you were under the impression that things were just falling out of the sky, um, let me disabuse you of that. that. That is not happening here. Even Lindsey Graham saying, um, you know, let's calm down a little bit. I was surprised because they had been so critical of the administration. What do you make of, of their reaction and do you feel the same way? Well, for years now, we've had a problem with unified, unidentified aerial phenomena, so-called UAPs, fouling our ranges, things showing up on our training ranges and us not knowing what they are. We've actually tried to get the administration and the previous administration as well to take this most, more seriously. We set up a special office to adjudicate these issues. But until now, until it burst into public view, it really didn't get the attention it deserved, and which is why we need to conduct serious oversight of this. The second thing I'd say is there are times when national security demands secrecy. I get it. I'm an intel officer by trade. I think now is a time that demands complete transparency. Americans are unnerved. They're concerned about the idea that we don't have complete control over what's happening in our airspace. So I would urge the administration just to err on the side of transparency. Put it all out there in the open for people to see, including the first incident. Put the Chinese spy balloon, once we analyze it, out there so we understand exactly what's happening you don't, in our Do you airspace. don't feel that they're being as transparent as they can be? Well, I think right now, as Senator King alluded to, there's a lot of unanswered questions with the incidents two, three, and four. That I don't fault them because there's an ongoing recovery effort, and until we recover it and analyze it, we won't know the origin of that. But I really think now we just need to be open and honest. I've been disappointed with some of the details in these briefings. I'm hoping we get more details going forward. This is an area where we have bipartisan concerns, and I think we can resolve it in a bipartisan fashion. Senator, do you agree with that? You think they should be more public about you know what they yes. do know and don't know? Yes, absolutely. It's the instinct of the intelligence community to hold information tight, um, even if it isn't necessary. The real reason for uh, uh, keeping things classified is not revealing sources and methods. How did we learn things? We don't want to signal that to our adversaries. But in this case, uh, I, I agree with Mike that the, the more transparency, the better, because as, as, as he said, people are sort of unnerved by this. But in terms of the briefing yesterday, they told us what they know. 
it wasn't that they were holding anything back, at least as far as I could tell, and I know a lot of those individuals. Uh, right now, they're just we, we just aren't going to know anything for probably a week as they try to gather whatever uh, uh, remains they can find of these objects that they shot down. So well, let me ask you then, because this is a matter of obviously national security, but it's also um, you know foreign affairs and the concern about China here because in an editorial in Chinese state media, China said that shooting down the balloon showed how, and I quote, immature and irresponsible, indeed hysterical, the United States has been in dealing with the case. Do you think shooting down an unknown aerial object in the sky makes the U.S. look weak? And is that a problem with a foreign adversary like China that people may, they may see this as an aggressive action? Go ahead, Mike. I see you're Representative, I see you shaking your head there. Not, not at all. I mean, this is Chinese state media would still have you believe that this is a civilian weather balloon. And the idea that we are the ones who are provoking when they are the ones who are violating our airspace, violating international law, I think is is laughable. What makes us look weak is if we do nothing in response to this violation of our sovereignty. And I would say Senator Angus King and I worked very closely together on a cyber commission for two years where we discovered that the Chinese are violating our sovereignty every single day and crossing our border every single second in cyberspace. And there's much more we need to do to protect our domestic infrastructure here. But to do nothing and allow this aggression to continue, I think would invite further aggression. And Senator, one thing that the two of you are working on is you're saying people are so worried about balloons and objects that are being shot out of the sky. Meanwhile, every day on their phones, you know, half of maybe, maybe all the parents watching, their kids have TikTok. And you're saying that those surveillance efforts, you said, uh, basically Americans are voluntarily giving up their browsing and viewing habits to the Chinese government. Well, it's important, Caitlin, to start with uh, an understanding that in, in China, according to their law, any private company has to give up information or data that's in its possession when requested by the government. So in effect, that makes every private, uh, gov uh, private company, whether it's TikTok or anything else, Huawei, an agent of the, of the, China, of the Chinese government. And that's really what the issue is here. And by the way, we, we can't say definitively that they're using TikTok in this way, but the risk is, is very great because the use of this app, they can uh, essentially know where people are going, what they're looking at, what they're doing. They can also use it for disinformation. They can use it in subtle ways with their algorithm to steer our kids in certain directions or our, our people that are using TikTok. So uh, that's why uh, Mike Gallagher in the House, Marco Rubio and I in the Senate have introduced a bill to either ban it, which isn't the preferred alternative, or for them to sell it to an American or a, a Western a, a company so that this pipeline into the uh, uh, intelligence agencies in Beijing is cut off. It's just, it's an unacceptable risk. And, and you know, we're talking about one big balloon. How about 62 million users of, of TikTok uh, every day in the United States? That's where I think there's a serious risk. Well, let's hope something can get done with both parties in the House and the Senate. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. So